are so excited to share this time of worship with you. We're so glad that we can come to where you are. Isn't it wonderful that the church is not a building, but the church is all of us gathering to worship together. And I want us to do that today. The praise team is going to come and lead us and right where you are, whether you are at home in your living room or in your automobile or wherever you may be this morning, let's take time to worship the Lord in spirit and truth. And I promise he's going to be there right with you, revealing himself in a great and comforting, encouraging way today. Let's pray together. Let's open our hearts to the Lord as we worship him today. Father, we are so grateful that we can enter your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. We're so grateful that you have made us individually the temple of the Holy Spirit, that we can have your presence with us, and we do, dwelling within us. We ask for you to manifest your grace and glory in our homes, in our families, with our friends, wherever we may be. I pray, Father, that you would strengthen and encourage throughout this day as we worship and lift you, focus on you. Thank you, Father, for this privilege that we have to come into your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship with this praise team this morning as they lead us in the presence of the Lord.
things that are so unpredictable. Maybe it's a marriage or maybe it's your children that you are struggling to help find the Lord or to find the life that you know that he would have them to live. Maybe it's your personal finances. And today we need to know the God that we can trust an unknown future to. Regardless of what the uncertainties may present to us, we can know the one who not only knows the future, he knows the end from the beginning, but he holds the future. And so whatever we may be experiencing, whatever we may be going through today, like Corey, let us never be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known God. I think of the Apostle Paul when he was imprisoned, certainly unknown what may happen and when. He prays in 2 Timothy 1 and 12, I know, do you know? I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that that I've entrusted to him for that day. Can you say that in your life? I know whom I've believed. I know him. I have a personal relationship with him. Will you say that in your uncertainty or your fear? I know whom I have believed and he is able to keep that which I have entrusted to him against that day or for that day. When the pandemic really hit a couple of weeks ago, when I say it really hit, it seemed to really just come upon us in our preparedness and how that we would uh, navigate through these times. A passage of scripture came to my heart that I'll be honest with you, I've not really studied in my life out of one of the minor prophets, the book of Nahum. And maybe you're like me, the book of Nahum is not a place that you go to regularly for your devotions. But in Nahum chapter one, verse seven, this word came alive to me when Nahum wrote, the Lord is good, a refuge in times of trouble. He cares for those who trust in him. It was like it was a diamond in a lump of coal for the people of God to hear this verse. Because if you read the first six verses, and then you read verse eight and following this verse, what you will find is that God is actually using the prophet Nahum to pronounce judgment on God's enemies, the Assyrians. They were a global threat. They were one step away from really being the world empire that preceded Babylon and, and the, Mer or the Medes and the Persians. They were a fierce and ruthlessly uh, savage people. And God is pronouncing judgment on Assyria to a people in Judah who are apprehensive. They are filled with anxiety because it seems like they're one of the few nations that has not been touched by the rulership of this nation. And it's out of this context that in stark contrast to what's written before and after, here comes this guiding light to the people of God. The Lord is good. He is a refuge in times of trouble. And he cares for those who trust in him. It's interesting to me that the name Nahum means comforter. He was certainly living up to his name when he made this statement to the people of God. Several other wonderful passages of scripture from Nahum that we go to as believers in Christ Jesus today. But what a comfort and what an encouragement this must have been to these people who had such apprehensions and such anxiety. And from this verse of scripture, very simple outline, God says to us, there are three things that I want you to know about me in the time of trouble. And the first one is the Lord, Yahweh, Jehovah, 
the Lord is good. This truth, the Lord is good, has great underpinnings for our theology, for our faith, for our relationship with the Lord that we began understanding in our relationship with the Lord that the Lord is good. Now it's easy to say that God is good when my bills are paid. It's easy to say God is good when uh, my family is healthy and uh, my times are enjoyable. But it is difficult for us to say the Lord is good when the tempter comes to us, the enemy as he has in so many occasions that we read about even in the scriptures to cause us to want to doubt God's goodness in our lives when we're going through our own personal crisis in life. Our marriage, we lose a loved one in death, whatever it may be. And whether it's the tempter, the devil himself, or our own sin nature, or the world system that's asking us, can you really say God is good when there's a worldwide pandemic like coronavirus? Can you really say that? And I come back with an unequivocal Amen, it is true, the Lord is good. You know, we used to say in church, God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. And through this time that we have of uncertainty in our lives, let's, let's remember the basic tenets of our faith and our relationship that the Lord is good. Now, we are human. And we're like the psalmist in Psalm chapter 73. He was having a difficult time. And it's interesting to me, when I open up this psalm, Psalm 73, it's interesting that he opens up with, surely God is good to Israel. Now notice what he says, but as for me, sometimes we, we even get to that place where God's good to everybody else. But what's wrong with me? Why am I going through this? Why am I going through trouble? when it seems like everybody else, even those who don't have a relationship with the Lord, are faring well. And I want to tell you the Bible and remind you that the Bible says that he always causes the rain to come to the righteous and unrighteous. I know that you're glad that the Lord loved us while we were still in our sin, and he was good then, and he's good now when we've come to him. But the psalmist said, but as for me, my feet almost slipped. I nearly lost my foothold. And then he began to say, for when I saw the, the prosperity of those that didn't trust in the Lord, I do trust you, Lord. And I see how good they're having it in their life. And I'm going through such difficult times in my own life. He, he went on to say, all day long, I have been plagued. That's where we get sometimes. The enemy wants to tempt us in that way. What turned the psalmist around? Matter of fact, he said, when I tried to understand all this, it was oppressive to me till I entered the sanctuary of the Lord. That's why we've gathered here this morning together in your living room, in your automobile, where you, wherever you may be. That's why we've gathered. We've come into the presence of the Lord. We've come into the sanctuary of the living God. And when you and I get to worship him and get in his presence and know him. We can say with the great worship psalm, Psalm 100, you remember it, make a joyful noise unto the Lord all you land, serve the Lord with gladness, come before his presence with singing. We've done that. But then he closes out that psalm by saying, for the Lord is good. I'd just like to ask you to say that right now in your own heart and in your own life. For the Lord is good good. His love endures forever. His faithfulness continues for all generations. I'm glad to report to you that Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever, is the good shepherd, and the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep, and when we were yet without strength, he died for every one of us because he is a good, good father. Amen. We can't blame evil on God. He's good. And every good gift and every perfect gift comes from him. You know, there's a passage of Scripture talking about the goodness of the Lord and how he works in our lives. 
in Romans chapter 8 and verse 28 that we know. Did you hear that? We're talking about what we know that God reveals to us about himself. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love him, to those who have been called according to his purpose. You know, I've heard people say when people are going through a tragedy and a hard time, it's all good. Everything's good. Well, the, the fact is, is that it's not always good. There's some things that God has no nothing to do with. They're not good. It's not all good. And so we just don't need to take this scripture and say, well, it's all good. Or they, I've heard this quoted, and maybe you have too, and I probably have misquoted it in my own life. Everything works together for good. But that's not what Romans 8 and 28 is saying to us either. Roman, Romans 8 and 28 says, we know, so we know that our God is good, and we know that in everything, God works for the good of those who love him, who are the called according to his purpose. We love because he first loved us. And when we come to that relationship and we begin to know the Lord, that he is good, it makes all the difference in the world. How we deal with pandemics and how we deal with personal crises and how we deal with injustices in life and when we've been so mistreated, it's just like Joseph in his own life. When he was betrayed by his brothers, when he was made a slave in the Egyptian official's house named Potiphar, when he went to prison for something that he absolutely was righteous before the Lord in, when he went through all of this, eventually, though he didn't know his future, he knew that God was at work. He knew that God was at work in all of these circumstances. And when God turned his situation around and he used him, he showed him the great purpose of why he had gone through what he went through even. He was reunited to his brothers. And in Genesis 50 and 20, he said, but as for you, you meant it is evil against me. But listen, but God meant it for good. You know, it's a wonderful blessing for every one of us to know that regardless of even the mess that we've made in our lives, that God can turn that mess into a masterpiece because he's a good, good father when we trust him and when we look to him and when we are sure that he holds our future. You know, Moses was having a difficult time getting the people of God through that wilderness at times. God had called him to lead the people through. And the scripture says that Moses is having a frank conversation with God about this. And he just, he just says to the Lord, well, God says to him, my presence is going to give you go with you and I'm going to give you rest. And Moses says, I'm not going, Lord, another step with these people unless you do go with me. And as he began to commune with the Lord and, and talk with the Lord, he made a, a request that's very familiar to us. He said, show us, show me your glory. Listen to what the Lord said to Moses. He didn't say, Look, Moses, I'll show you my glory or Moses, I'll show you part of my glory. But this is what the Lord said. I will cause my goodness to pass in front of you and I will proclaim my name, the Lord, Yahweh, in your presence. I want to tell you <clears throat> his presence, his goodness, and his glory testify to us that in a time of trouble, God wants us to know his name and he wants us to trust in him unequivocally. Another thing that we, <coughs> excuse me, learn from Nahum chapter one and verse seven is that the Lord is my strength and defense. He says that um, the Lord is good, a refuge in times of trouble. How comforting it is to call on the name of the Lord Jesus in my time of trouble. How awful it would be not to be able to call on him 
in time of trouble. But the good news is, he said, whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved, wherever we may be. And uh, many, many times, how often he has brought that comfort to me in sorrow when I just called upon his name, that he is a refuge in times of trouble. How many times has he brought strength in times of weakness and hope in times of despair in my life? He comes to us to say to us in this time of crisis and trouble, I want you to know that I am good and I'm a refuge in times of trouble. You know, I'm told America is protected by a great satellite defense system, not only our armed forces, but we have a a great satellite defense system. Can't see it, but it's there protecting us from foreign invasion. What's greater is that we have a God that we do not see him naturally. He is our refuge. He is our strength. He is our defense in times of trouble. This word refuge in Nahum 1 and 7 can be and is translated strongholds, maybe in your Bible, the New King James Version. It also means strength. And we read it so often in the scriptures. Think about this. The Lord wants you to know this about him, that he is good and that he is your strength. He is your defense. The psalmist wrote about it in Psalm 27 and 1. He said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord, watch this, is the stronghold or the refuge or the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Proverbs 18 and 10 says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and they are saved. You know, there is a Psalm, Psalm 46, and it is indirectly connected with Nahum 1 and 7. Not directly, but indirectly connected with this passage because almost 100 years before Nahum wrote this to the children of Judah, they had already had an experience with Assyria. And Psalm 46, it is believed, was written by King Hezekiah because of the Lord's deliverance from Assyria. In that story, that great story that Psalm 46 gives us the victory praise over was one of the great miracles of God in the history of the world because Sennacherib and the Assyrians had completely surrounded the city of Jerusalem. And as they were just waiting, as they had toppled other kingdoms, like the northern kingdom of Israel already, just waiting to starve them out, they sent Hezekiah a letter saying, you just as well to give up the gods of these other nations. They, didn't, they had gods too, but they didn't protect them. Hezekiah took that letter from Sennacherib, the Syrian commander, and he just laid it on the altar before the Lord. And he said, Lord, I want you to hear their threats. And that night, the Bible says, because the Lord heard Hezekiah and Isaiah, that he sent an angel through the, through the camp of the Assyrians. And that angel slew 185,000 Assyrians because a king trusted in the Lord in a time of trouble. And this is what he wrote in Psalm 46 and 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. I want to read Psalm 91 for us because I think it's important for us as we hear so much information not only about this pandemic but also in your life it seems like that if you're going through a time of trouble that's when you start it's like your life is an antenna and it picks up all the bad news but I want you to remember Psalm 91 I'm going to read it for you 91 and 1 he who dwells in the shelter of the most high will rest in the shadow of the almighty I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Now notice verse three. Surely he will save you from the fouler snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness 
<coughs> excuse me, his faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror by night, nor the error that flies by day, verse 6, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. I want us to, you know, I thank God for so many people right now, our president, our congressman, the health officials, the task force, our local officials that are trying to help us during this time. I thank God for all the resources that we have here in America, but let us not trust in horses and chariots. Let us, as the psalmist said, put our trust in the Lord our God, for he alone is our Defense. He alone is our strength. He alone is our strength. He is our stronghold. He is the dwelling place that protects us and keeps us. And then lastly, Nahum, writing under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, says God wants you to know this about him, that the Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. He's with you in your marriage. He's with you when you feel lonely. Maybe you don't even feel like you can turn to anybody right now in a situation that you're going through. Maybe you feel like you can't even explain yourself. But the Lord is with you. He cares for those who trust in him, Nahum said. He is close, the NLT says, to those who trust in him. Let me just assure you, that God is not passively watching over us. But this scripture means that God is actively working in your life right now, casting all of your care on him. He cares for you. And when you and I trust in the Lord, and we're not trusting ourselves, we're not trusting in our own resources, he is letting us know that, hey, I'm at work in your life. I'm working it out. I'm going to make that masterpiece of you if you will trust me. And that's the operative word for those who trust him. You know, loneliness, I suppose, is one of those emotions in our life that, wow, it's just hard to get through. Sometimes we feel like the Lord has abandoned us, but he hasn't abandoned us. He's right there with you, caring for you, Psalm 23 and 4, David said, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Watch this. Your rod and your staff comfort me. You are actively guiding and leading and providing and caring in, in my defense and watching over me. But it's not just from afar. You are walking with me through it all. God hasn't abandoned you. He's with you in your time of crisis, in your time of trouble. God has said, Hebrews 13 and 5 says, God has said, never will I leave you. The original Greek says, never, 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 never. Never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. So that we may boldly say or say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what can man do to me. You know, in my uh, family's house, my daughter-in-law back in Colorado Springs, she has a little plaque in, <clears throat> in my daughter's bathroom. And uh, both, my, I'm sorry, my granddaughter's bathrooms. And uh, in that their bathroom, it has this little saying, wash your hands and say your prayers. Because Jesus and germs are everywhere. And we've heard a lot about washing our hands, and that's great advice, and I'm washing mine more than I ever have. But I want to just remind us, that's important, but Jesus is with us, never to leave us, nor forsake us, he promised in our, our lives. John Wesley was called upon to help London after they had going through one of the worst earthquakes in history. It was in 1870, and he was called to speak. And it was impromptu. And suddenly he said well, to himself, what am I going to say? 
and he went to Psalm 46 and 10 the psalm that I've already alluded to that Hezekiah wrote when the Assyrians almost 100 years later was coming against Israel and God delivered them he read this scripture be still and know that, that word be still means stop doing what you're doing and start doing what God wants us to do stop fearing and start trusting stop panicking and stop and start praying stop worrying and start worshiping be still and know there it is what does God want us to know about him he said and to know that I am God I will be exalted among the nations I will be exalted in the earth the Lord Almighty is with us the God of Jacob is our fortress and John Wesley paused after reading the scripture and he said the greatest news I can give London in this time of crisis is God is with us he paused again and shouted it out one more time God is with us and I want to encourage you just to be still and stop doing anything that's counterproductive whatever crisis you may be in trusting in yourself whatever that might be worrying, fretting trying to work it all out and start worshiping and praying and doing those things that the Lord has given to us to do to show that well we've heard from the Lord and he says this is what I want you to know about me in your time of trouble I want you to know that I am good I want you to know that I am a refuge in times of trouble and I want you to know that he cares for those who trust in him I'm going to ask you to pray with me would you just pray right where you are and do you have a need in your own life as you just bow with me for prayer and right there in your living room or whether, wherever you may be I'm, I'm asking you just to say to yourself what a comfort it is to know the Lord but if you don't know the Lord listen to what Jesus said in his final prayer before he went to the cross he said this in John 17 and 3 in that upper room before he went to the garden he says now this is eternal life that they may know you the only true God in Jesus Christ whom you have sent I want to ask anyone here listening if you don't know the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior if you've not received him and accepted him in that's the greatest knowledge you'll ever have to know that he is good that he is love that he is faithful that he is true that he is your refuge in times of trouble and that he cares for those who put their trust in him Heavenly Father we come before you and we thank you that there's some things we can know we don't have to maybe so we don't have to wish it were so but we can know whom we have believed we can know that all things work together for good and that in everything, God, you are at work for good to those who love you, to those who are called according to your purpose. And I pray, Father, for these, your precious people. I pray that regardless of the trouble they may find themselves in, that they would find comfort and grace and help and strength in their time of need. You are there. Help them to know that today. And you're actively working in their lives. If anyone doesn't know the Lord Jesus Christ I pray they would turn to you today thank you for forgiveness of sins thank you for cleansing us thank you for eternal life forever but right now life with you we receive this and thank you for it in Jesus name amen we uh, have some exciting news for all of our church family uh, we are offering to you now online giving and uh, that will be available to you. You'll be seeing that a lot on our website, on text messages, in various ways. You'll be seeing uh, those very things and ways in which you and I can support the work of the, the gospel. I want to thank you for your generosity. I want to thank you for your faithfulness and all that God is doing through our church family, through 
your faithfulness to him. Thank you so very much. If you have any questions, just call the church office and we'll help guide you through that in any way that we can. You'll see information as I speak on how you can give online and be a part of the great work of God in this day. Well, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you peace in your life both now and forevermore.